I'm Dr. Jim Coyle, and this is the last tutorial in the Challenges in Human Behavior series, where we talk about putting it all together. Consider what you've learned about life challenges in this course. And I'd like you to consider first by looking at the processes that you've been using to assess clients' life challenges in your own practice. And how do you decide effective intervention? And then go back and consider how this course has either confirmed the validity of what, you've done, what you are doing right now, or perhaps suggested ways that could improve that process. Have you changed what you're doing with your clients? In what ways? How, when the client describes a life challenge, do you have a different way of looking at it now? What are you doing? How's it working? As we're thinking about this, jot down your insights. Consider how you are using things differently, perhaps based upon our discussions in this course. Also notice the importance of an ecological approach. The final assigned readings um, reported studies of violence and black and white placement gap that notice interactions between individual and community influences. And through the tutorials in this course, we've been talking about how important it is to recognize that um, life challenges are not simply an individual issue, but they are influenced by things around us, by our community, by our families, by what's happening in our society. Consider how ecological factors influence your client's life challenges and jot down your ideas about this. In addition, we've talked about the importance of strengths and resilience perspectives as well as the life course perspective. These are important because they help us examine life challenges in context. Challenges are not the whole picture. Both risks and protective factors are important for us to look at in terms of understanding how a client is managing what is going on in their life. In addition, challenges occur within a normal development. And when we can identify how a person's life challenge is related to normal development, we can have a sense that people have been able to manage this and it gives the client and us hope that there are very simple things that can be done that can get a client through this and they're part of an individual growth. So it fits into that resilience piece in terms of that we, you know, we go through these challenges and we become stronger afterwards. Consider how these theoretical approaches and how these, un, these further understandings of life challenges may influence your perception of the life challenges that your clients are presenting to you. And once again, take some notes on what you're thinking about, how this is related to what's going on in you as well as what's going on in your practice. We started this course by talking about the fact that there's a link between a problem, which is conceptualized as a life challenge in this course, how we understand the problem, theory, as well as how we help decrease the problem, which is intervention. Notice that there are strengths and limitations related to all parts of this, and that's a pretty natural occurrence. And understanding the life challenge, it's important for us to understand how different groups may experience life challenges in different ways. And that that's something we need to pay attention to. How we conduct our research and the statistical methods that we use may also define life challenges in particular ways that may have pros and cons to them. It's also helpful to recognize how politicians either take up or do not take up the life challenge because we recognize that our ability to help people and how we are able to help people is very much influenced by social policy. Uh, related to theory, 
we need to consider how well does our theory match the life challenge? Um, and what does it address and what does it not address? We don't have a sense uh, or an expectation that one theory is going to explain everything about a life challenge since these are complicated issues. But we certainly can take a look at from one theory what it explains and what it does not explain. And ultimately we can then take a look at does the single theory give us enough information to kind of begin to plan what we will do about this? Or do we need to be looking at integrating a number of theories or changing to a different theory? Regarding intervention, it's also a matter of how well does the intervention that we're thinking about match the life challenge? How well does it fit? How well will it help the, the person, the client, as well as how does it fit with the theory? Because if we're using a particular theory that explains how that life challenge occurs, then using an intervention that doesn't fit with that theory is, is not going to, to make it fit with the way that we're conceptualizing things and the way that we're talking to the client about this. We also need to take a look at how rigorously has this intervention been tested. An example of that um, is, um, you know, recently is, is in the COVID uh, vaccines. You know, certainly there's been a lot of rigorous research about the COVID vaccines, but one of the issues that's recently been coming up is, has the vaccine been tested in the particular population that's being recommended for? And so we have situations where vaccines are not been have not been recommended for particular parts of population, such as people over 65 or people under 12. Um, because the research has not been tested, has not tested that particular uh, intervention with that population. So the thing is, is and for us, it's not, not just a matter of age, but it may be a matter of minority group, maybe a matter of gender and sex. Um, <clears throat> these are things to take into consideration and will the intervention fit? So, Consider how this tutorial may provide you with ideas for your second critical reflection. And this is where jotting down your ideas can help you with that particular assignment. Think about what you wrote for the first critical reflection. Remember that reflection communicates your ideas and experiences, what's going on with you personally, rather than presenting an analysis from the literature. Analysis from the literature are great, they're just not reflections. Consider what you've learned in this course about the links between life challenge theory and intervention and how that's affecting you as a social work practitioner. All in all, what have you learned, not only from this tutorial, but from the course? How does that help you? in your development as a social work practitioner? How has it influenced what you are doing? This is what we'll be spending the final moments in our class talking about and kind of getting you ready for how you can take the content of this course and make it very practical in your future as a social worker. But I'll be glad to uh, have this discussion with you. I'm looking forward to it.